This is the Triumph Speed Twin and it's long been right up there with my favourite retro motorcycles because it's fast, fun and looks absolutely spot on. But thing is, Norton have brought back their Commando, now re-engineered and they say better than ever. So which British branded sporty retro is actually the best in 2023? Well myself and Tim took them both out for a spin to find out. But before we get started, I just want to say a massive thanks to Lewis Moto for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Today I'm wearing their DL JM8 jacket from their in-house Detlev Lewis retro brand, which perfectly suits this style of bike. And I've been super impressed with the quality and fit, especially considering the price point, which I think is excellent. But that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the Lewis Moto store, because they stock gear, accessories, tools and parts, not only from their own brands, but also the biggest and best names in motorcycling. So there should be something for everyone at all different budgets and whilst their stores are largely based in Germany and the rest of Europe, they also ship to the UK with fast delivery and free returns. So I'd thoroughly recommend you check out the link down in the description to all of their awesome deals. I'll also put a link down there specifically to this jacket as well. Once again, a massive thanks to Lewis Moto for their support and with that we'll get on with these two bikes. Let's get started with one of the most important aspects of retro motorcycle ownership and that's how the bike looks. The Speed Twin is a great benchmark with loads of attention to the details and a high level of quality in the finish. Clearly there are some visual references that tie it in nicely with the Bonneville family, but this one has a bit of a sporty naked kind of riding style and so to fit in with its persona they've given it a slightly stripped back appearance and a bit of a forward slanting lean that adds a touch of aggression. The other thing to note which you might have noticed on this bike is the orange paint job. A couple of years ago Triumph came in for a little bit of criticism for not doing anything really beyond black and muted colors and so recently across their whole lineup yeah. to be fair you'll see lots more pop in and vibrant color choices but this is really at the extreme end of the spectrum yeah, this is so. Baja orange which I think goes back to I just realized it's the same color as the street same triple color as my street triple that you loved right you like that color. oh I actually have grown to like this color I think <laughs> so you were right all along over to the commando it's got a little bit of a different vibe there hasn't it I really like the fact that it's got really polished chrome areas on it which normally I think I would shy away from on my bike one because they're hardest to maintain but also it's maybe a little dated looking but on this I think it really works and I wouldn't have it any other way and then it comes to like the overall shape of it things like the rear section on this between the two I don't know whether you'd agree I much prefer looking at the tail section on this so the speed twin is a little neater and sleeker as you'd probably expect from a higher production bike the Norton though has a bit more passion and flair if not quite as refined on the details like the switch gear. But that's what you probably expect from something that's handmade, more expensive and made in lower volumes. So I think I know where your vote's going on this category. Commando? Yeah, easily. It's just a little bit more arresting, right? People stop and ask you questions about it. So I think I'm going to have to go speed twin, although I will say I agree, it probably needs a little bit of customization to make it feel like special. The other somewhat superficial aspect of retro ownership is that you do want something that sounds nice and I think this category is not really up for debate. No, it's it's an absolute walk away win for the Norton, surely. The source of the sound is pretty similar in these two bikes with the big parallel twins, but the Norton has much more depth and richness and it must be down to the freer flowing exhaust system with the huge bass inducing exit at the silencer. And while the speed twin can be improved massively with a set of aftermarket exhausts, still straight from the factory the Commando sounds by far and away the best and so it has to take the two points. On the engine front it does feel like the Triumph is at a bit of an advantage. I mean, there are two big advantages. Number one, it's a 1200, so you've got like 250 cc more capacity, but also it's liquid cooled as well, isn't it? So whereas you've got the more old school air cooled engine on the Norton, this one is a bit more modern. It will rev up a little bit more. It will make that bit more power, and you feel it, don't you, on the road? You definitely do. Yeah. I mean, in this one's favour, it's a really hard thing to quantify, and I think it gets overused as a word, but characterful. It is a characterful engine, 
and you have to really appreciate that. It vibes a lot more, doesn't it? It definitely vibes a lot more, yeah. We've spoken about the fact that it's a treat for the senses. You get sights, sounds, smells, feelings. It's a very complete package, this one, but there is no question. If you want a fast bike, then that's the pick. The other thing you've got here on the Speed Twin is that you've got three riding modes, so rain, road, and sport. To be honest, it doesn't really need the sport mode so much because even in road mode, it is this very direct throttle response. It's got the ride-by-wire throttle and basically you feel like you twist it and it gives you the exact same amount of shove straight out the back wheel. It's so torquey that it's uh, pretty unbelievable, really. It's a much faster bike than it looks. And so I think we're gonna have to give this one to the Speed Twin, aren't we? Yeah, for power, performance, definitely. Now on the question of handling though, it's not quite so straightforward. I mean, this is a great handling bike and it does feel more compact i suppose you know you're up and over the front a bit aren't you like uh it feels more like a speed triple or something like that like a modern roadster than it does uh the rest of the bonneville family like the t100 or the t120 you know it really does go nicely round bends for a retro and it brakes well and suspension's okay but it just feels like the commando is a little step up yeah i definitely prefer the feel of this one i feel much more connected with it it just kind of gets out of your way and lets you flow through the corners i get what you're saying because this bike's on its nose i don't know if that means it just needs a bit of a shove to turn in and also i do feel like triumph you know the one area they've cheaped out a little bit is on the shocks you don't have that sumptuous ride quality that you do on the norton and i think that's a product of this bike being built to a price whereas the commando feels a little bit more like it's been built sort of money no object lovely adjustable olin suspension front and rear on the commando you really do feel that step up in ride quality and of course the adjustability is going to mean you can get it exactly dialed to your weight your riding style and all that kind of good stuff and i do get what you're saying it feels like effortless despite the fact that it's a little bit heavier so i think points for this one what do you think mate oh it's definitely going to be to the more poised norton for me same two nil to the norton each bike clearly has its own strengths, but the big piece of context we're missing is the price, and it's quite a substantial difference. The Speed Twin comes in at £11,795 for the most basic black paint job, and while you will pay a little bit more for the orange you see here, for example, it doesn't even come close to the Commando, which starts at £16,999. So look, purely from a perspective of getting a sporty retro for the lowest price, you can save five grand with the Triumph, but I'd I don't think that's what the Norton is really about. Yeah, I mean, we went around the factories today, in fact, and saw where the money goes. Once you've had that, it's definitely much easier to justify the price difference between these two. Yeah, we saw through the glass a bloke kind of lovingly hand polishing some of the parts that were going on some of the other bikes, and you kind of see that level of detail, and you see that in the finish as well. Yeah. But still, with all that said, I think you have to give this one to the Triumph, and so that's another two points. That makes it five apiece in total, and so the big question remains. Which bike would we actually buy if it were our own money? Even considering having an extra five grand in my pocket if I went that route, I would still personally go for the Norton Commando. And I think the majority goes down to the fact that it is, in my opinion, a little bit more special. I think I'd probably go here because it's so addictive the way it's got that immediate throttle response, almost like KTM sort of Super Duke vibe. You just turn the throttle and it just thrusts forward. And so for me, I think I find that hard to turn down. Spend the rest of it on getting a nice exhaust, custom paint job. But as always, we'd love to know your pick down in the comments below. So so do let us know. And in fact, if you want to see what's possible with a custom Speed Twin, I think over the years I've made three separate videos about different custom jobs. So I'll make a little playlist and put it on the screen over by Tim. I won't cover you up, it'll be sort of um, in the sort of crotchal region. Yeah, now. click on my crunch. <laughs> and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, please do hit subscribe. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.